of Liv is somebody who I think should be gradually going up a level. Uh, I, I find I find that Liv has joy in the ring. Uh, I find that she really it, it looks like she really enjoys what she's doing, and you can't say that for for the way everybody you know works on TV. But I when I watch her wrestle, I go, man, this is someone who really is having a great time out there. What a great baby face. That, that's kind of how I see her. Now, the booking, the creative is, is a bit backwards. I, I when, when she went to, to run in on Rhonda, I was like, oh, she's going to say, I see you're hurt. We're, let's do this match on SmackDown. I'll give you a week. And then Rhonda still comes in hobbled in SmackDown, and then there's some, some other stuff going on, and, and she wins the title there. But no, she just attacks this uh, hurt baby face herself. And then we get the love fest at the end when she does win. Now let's take the sort of the maybe the backwards creative as far as how we have how we learned wrestling. Let's just look at it for moving forward. And Kyle, we'll start with you since you had mentioned it. Is Liv Morgan, I believe, being in the mix is actually good for WWE. But my worry is that she's going to sort of fall by the wayside and that belt's going right back to Ronda at SummerSlam. And maybe they think that that is, oh, look, it just shows that she could be at that level and then she's going to win it again and it'll be even bigger. But to me, I'm like, if she's not really ready to have a reign here, maybe we should have held that off until we were comfortable giving her a long one. But do you expect her to hold the belt past SummerSlam? Do you expect it to be a thing with Ronda again and Ronda gets the belt back? Like, what what are you looking for as far as your expectation to, to Liv Morgan here? Very low, low expectations. I would not be shocked at all if she loses to Ronda at SummerSlam. They've got a lot invested in Ronda, unless if that relationship has deteriorated more than we that you know to a degree that we don't know about. I, I assume Ronda is still going to be in the main event mix for WrestleMania. Uh, Becky Lynch is going to be in that mix. You've got Bianca Belair. I just don't think there's room for Liv Morgan at the top when you look to like as far out as WrestleMania. I mean, could she hold the title for a couple months and then it means nothing after she loses? Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. I just see that cash in as, okay, look, we do money in the bank every year. Somebody has to win the briefcase and do something with it. And this is what, five years in a row now? They've had the woman's winner hold on to it for less than 24 hours. It's just rinse, repeat. And most of those runs don't mean anything long-term. I mean, Ryan mentioned Nikki Ash you know, last year, that was very, that was, and we knew going in that that was dumb. Nobody had any faith in that. And look at her now. She wasn't even in the money to make match this year, which is the kids to death. Is so she no, on I, TV? I, when they need someone to like lose. Yeah, she'll be on, but that's it. I mean, she, I mean, her days of winning, I don't know. They were doing stuff with her and uh, do you trap, but uh, <laughs> that's about it there. So no, I, I have no faith that like, She's is she going to be at the top of the card as we roll into Mania season next year? I'd be stunned to answer your question. What do you think, Ryan? I think the whole thing, yeah, exactly what Kyle said. They looked at this as this is the chance to make a moment with no thought to the long term process at hand. Because, like you said, Garrett, you've got a baby face cashing in on a baby face. Let me just ask you this. Now, let's say, Garrett, you are this like hardcore Liv Morgan fan. You never miss a match. You got the posters on the wall. You got the fan website and everything. I would, would have to be about feel... 15 or else that would be really. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, right? yeah, yes. that'd be really, I was going to say, please. <laughs> I, was, I was waiting like, for Garrett to say, oh, actually, I am. <laughs> yeah. You're describing me to a T. Like, <laughs> but wouldn't you feel cheated? Like, you've waited all these years for her to get a championship, and that's how it happens. Like, as a baby face, wouldn't you want her? to like declare she's cashing in like we've seen some faces do in the past and get the victory in a hard fought match. It's just such a cheap way for a baby face to win the title. And then if they're just going to turn around and drop it right back to Ronda at SummerSlam, there's no purpose to it other than a moment for one night. And by the way, Ronda, again, a baby face, if they actually do Ronda and Liv Morgan at SummerSlam and she loses it in that stadium, it's just going to be a complete revolt. I mean, it's going to be a terrible reaction. I mean, I think if Charlotte's on her way back, they should do 
Charlotte against Liv Morgan if they want to sure. switch the title up. But or you know maybe Charlotte comes out and costs Ronda. So who who knows? But I yes. I have no faith no faith at all that this will turn into a long term win for Liv Morgan. I I hope it is. I would like for it to be. I think that she could be good at the top of the card, but. History says that ain't happening here. I was just going to say, I, I think Rhonda, they, you don't want to say, oh, they can't see this, but they have to see it. Like to me, I think they look at it by doing the rematch. When I heard that, my first thought is Ronda's is going to beat her like a drum and in WWE's mind, that's heat, <laughs> yeah. right? They're like that, that they took the moment away. Like Liv had this great moment and Rhonda, you know, does something devious and takes it away from her. That, that's what yeah. I mean. That's I, that's what I see happening, or I think they should do. To be honest with you, you know the the other thing about this is the other way to look at this, and you have to be really dialed in, like the three of us are, to even think this way. But I almost think maybe it was best that they did it this way because if they didn't, then there's opportunity for Vince to fall out of favor, and all of a sudden she's on the shelf or she gets Damien Sandow with this thing, which would be even worse. So some part of me goes, maybe this was the right way to do it because Vince could, could become, you know, f frustrated or lose interest or whatever. And then it's just, Oh, this poor woman has this briefcase and all they want to do is just beat her and beat her and beat her. So maybe this was the, the best thing to do here. Well, to what I said earlier, five years in a row, the women's winner, has cashed in within 24 hours. I think they do it partly because they don't want Vince to get bored. <laughs> and they just have chosen that, well, the women are going to do it that way. Yeah. They don't want to have two briefcase holders. We don't want Vince to sour on two people. So, you know, it's just a way to arbitrarily pop a rating or something like that, or just give people one of these manufactured moments. And that's what it is. And, and Ryan said something that's very interesting. Like, if you're a Liv Morgan fan, wouldn't you feel cheated? I, I think, like, the core WWE audience doesn't. And that's what just has me scratching my head. Like, we could say this stuff to we're blue in the face, and I think we're right. But there's just a part of that audience that just, they just like these people, and they're just happy that they win no matter how. And they don't and they don't even care how the ring goes. They just want to see them earn this line item on their resume that Michael Cole can repeat six months from now and doesn't mean the paper, it isn't worth the paper it's printed on. They don't Here's care how her run goes at all. Here I don't think. They just care that she got a moment.